and welcome to another episode of Let's Discuss. My name is Chirizi Chibubuze and I'll be the host for this episode. Before we get into the introductions, please find us on Facebook and YouTube. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. Please do click the notification bell to be notified for more videos. I would like to welcome our guest Bulelo Ampinda, who has many, many accolades. She is the CEO and founder of a youth empowerment group called Young and Spiritually Inspired. She is also the founder and host of a podcast called Inspired Talks. Bulelwa is a force to be reckoned with. Welcome, Bulelwa. Hello, Jilitsi. <laughs> thank you for having me. Yes, thank you for being here. Before we start, let me just say a word of prayer. Our Father, it's in heaven, as we come to you this day, Lord, we're thankful for you giving us life. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to be together, Lord, and to discuss your works, the marvelous works that you perform in us so that the world can see who you are through us, Lord. I pray in a special way that your spirit fill this room and fill us as we start our discussion. In your wonderful name, amen. Amen. So let's talk about it. Being an influencer and the social media that is a buzz about being an influencer. To me, if I were to choose three words that describe being an influencer, I would choose responsibility, yes. creativity, and courage. Responsibility because you're responsible for the people who you're influencing. Mm -hmm. you're, you're responsible for the perception that they'll have of you and the actions that you take on the platform that you have. Creativity because it takes creativity to always come up with content, you know and to have relevant information to give people. And lastly, courage, because it takes courage. It takes courage to put yourself at the forefront and say, this is me and this is what I want to give to the world. So yes, that's how I would wow. describe influencing. Yes. But I want to ask you, what does it mean to be an influencer to you? And if you have any other words that you'd use to describe being an influencer, what would they be? Right. Being an influencer to me means, rather let me put it like this, being a Christian influencer to mm -hmm. me means I am accountable for the souls that I'm leading towards God. So it's important in character. What I do, what I say must resemble the word of God. Mm -hmm. Everything um, that I put out must be biblically based. And it's so important, we live in a generation where God is not at the forefront of things. And being a Christian influencer for me means I am an advocate for heaven. Mm -hmm. Everything that I do, everything that I say has to um, resemble the reflection of God on earth. So it's being accountable, yes, being accountable for souls, it's being um, empathetic when people, young people come towards you and say, hey, Bulelwa, I'm faced with this situation and you must, you know, be available and speak life into them and also just be there to listen. It's so important to listen to young mm. people and not always have something to say. It's important mm. to listen. So being an influencer, I'd say, is just um, being a servant of God. Mm. Wow, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I can imagine that there are so many people who, like, who look up to you, mm. you know. Um, I gave a very short introduction of who you are. So mm -hmm. I'd also just like you to introduce yourself, um, to tell us about your journey on Young and Spiritually Inspired. Yes. What were the catalysts that influenced you, you know, to start the movement, the NGO, and all of that. So I'm Bula Lompinda, the founder and CEO of an organization called Young and Spiritually Inspired. I am honored to be called by God to lead such a movement. I am a servant of God. I am a daughter of God. I think that's the most um, 
I think resounding and most important titles I fall under is just being a servant. I love young people and I'm called to speak life where I need to. I'm a podcaster, so I have a podcast called The Inspired Talks, but most importantly, just a friend of God. Mm. And please, can you tell us more about Young and Spiritually Inspired? Mm. What motivated you to start the empowerment movement? All right. Uh, my journey started in 2010. Let me start there. I was doing my matric. And then after I matriculated, uh, well, got my distinctions and could not further my studies. And that's where the grace of God comes in. So at a very young age, I was adopted into the Mbinda family. Um, don't know my biological parents and seeing the hand of God throughout that, I realized that I had a story to tell mm. to young people. Mm. Um, at a very tender age, you know, 2011, I was 19 or 18, I can't remember, um, but just realizing that I couldn't further my studies, but God had called me to something greater. And I've always loved writing. I've always loved uh, poetry and writing songs. And God led me to, to that path of just writing more. And, you know, my friends would say, Willie, you write so well and you speak to us yeah. through your writings. And that's how Young and Spiritually Inspired formed. I started a Facebook page which then grew. I, I really then did not realize what God was doing. I kept writing. It's so important to be obedient to what God has called you to. And I started writing, started sharing the word, then formalized it being the NGO that it is today and just being there to give motivation to people and sharing my story of the adoption and everything and mm. people relating because when you go through circumstances and when you go through challenges or when people see you at higher accolades they think that you have not gone through anything mm. so just young and spiritually inspired is a God-ordained vision. God literally called me to it. And mm. today it's blown up in such an amazing manner and I'm grateful to God. And that's just the gist of Young and Spiritually Inspired. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing to hear that. It started yeah. on a Facebook page and now you're sitting at 60,000 followers on yeah. Instagram. Yes. So congratulations to you. Yes, yeah. thank you. And I agree with you saying that you do have that gift of writing. In your posts, you're so poetic with your messages, but in a way that it's relevant to mm. anyone who's going through hardship or who even needs just a pick-me-up. Mm. So yeah. Uh, what are the positives that you found in starting your Team YSI and you know, um, influencing to others? The most grateful and positive outcome is young people coming back to God. We live in a day and age where young people have so many things that they can run to. Mm. And even in the church, even in the Christian community, children have so many things that they can run to. And it's so important that we as the older generation can speak life and be relevant and mm. be very vulnerable about our stories. So they don't feel as if they are judged. They don't feel as if that you're coming from a point where you know it all, yeah. but just sitting down with young people and making them realize that it's so important to make solid and important choices, principled choices, that will bring a, a beautiful outcome later on in life. Mm. So just seeing the souls of, of, you know, God come back to him and just, you know, really say, you know, I've been wayward, I've backslidden, I haven't been reading the word of God, I haven't been praying. And just the testimonies for me, that is the most 
rewarding thing I can ever have. You mm. know, it's such a blessing to see young people give themselves to God mm. again. And I think that's, that's the most pivotal um, outcome, I'd say, has been beautiful mm. for me. You're basically reminding young people, you know, yes. how powerful God is. Absolutely. Oh, taste and see that, that the, the Lord, Lord is, is good. good. Yeah, yes. I love that. And we've spoken about the positives now. Mm. So I'll ask you about the challenges, mm. the negatives. Obviously, this is a daily job that you do mm. of motivating people. I'm mm -hmm. sure sometimes it can be tiring to do that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you may not get the support you want or yes. they may be trolling because the internet is for everyone, you know, mm -hmm. and not everyone may have the same vision that you do. Mm -hmm. So what are the negatives that you faced and how have you been motivated to keep going? All right. The negatives I would say would be, sure, I think when you're a public figure and when you, you know, out there speaking life and everything, people think that you don't need the support. Mm. People think that Bulelwa, I Uzoba, right? Because she's always, <laughs> she's always speaking life, you know, she's yeah. always, so just your, your, people thinking that I bully is fine. So there's a quotation that says, check on your strong friends, you know? Mm. And that is so important in, in the industry and the career that I've taken is just check on your strong friends, mm. even in the midst of motivating, even in the midst of just doing good, you know, they need that support, that moral support. Bully, how are you? Um, uh, is everything well? Mm. Um, Ministry is funded by donations, sponsorship. So it's not always going to um, have a great outcome financially, but it's important to know your why. Yes. And for me, the why has kept me for such a long time. And so probably the negatives would be the income is not as great, but then it goes back to the positives of knowing your why. Why did I start? Who has called you? Who has ordained you into this position? You know, it's, I always say that God will fund your ideas. God will fund your visions. What God calls you into, trust me, God will always make provision. So I'd say to anyone who's just listening, thinking, ah, oh, there's so many negatives around what I'm doing and everything. Just know your why and realize that the God that has called you into that very position will sustain you, will provide for you. There are people assigned to your life to bless you. So that, yes. that, that's always a motivation for me. Yes. yes. You're reminding me of the story of Saul and his conversion to Paul, mm. when even he himself, he did not know why he had been, why had he, he had begotten, you know, mm. such in his head ill fate, you mm. know, from persecuting people, mm. then to being humbled to that point. Mm. And, you know, sometimes God uses us, or well, most times, all the time, actually, he uses us knowing our knowing how much we can do and knowing sure. our potential and possibilities. Mm -hmm. And yes, yeah, I just agree with you saying, <laughs> knowing your why mm -hmm. is the import, important thing because then you're able to meet your, you're able to meet your desires and your goals and commitments Absolutely. and serve the Lord, you know, mm -hmm. in the way that he designed you to. Um, you also work with other youth who are doing very wonderful jobs as well. Mm. I mean, you work with people who are doing pad drives. Um, you work with others who are also NGOs mm. um, in their own rights. And, you know, it's amazing how you started this on your own, but you've also been exposed to other youth who are also influencing mm. in their own right. So, yeah, that's just amazing. Thank on my part, you. I just want to comment yeah. on that. Now, let's consider Naman's servant girl, you can also say that she was an influence, influencer at mm. her young age. I mean, she was taken captive, you know, by Naman's soldiers. 
on their campaigns and forced to be a servant for his and wife. wife. Yeah. Yes, and she was a Hebrew girl, not knowing anything of what they practiced. Mm. And she was put in a different environment altogether. But she saw that her master was struggling with his mm. leprosy. And she said to her mistress, oh, if only my master could meet the prophet of Samaria, Elisha, he mm. would be healed of his disease. And alas, he listened, mm. although he didn't understand why exactly it yes. had to be that he dumps himself into dirty water. Right. He listened and he went there and seven times um, after he was healed. Mm. So what are your thoughts uh, and what are some lessons Around. we can take away from this girl? Yeah, it's such a beautiful um, story in the Bible of just, you know, being positioned at the right place, you know, being influential and also, what I take from this story is that, you know, you always need to, even in the place that you are, um, being a servant or anything, it's so important that you speak of the God that you know. Mm. It's so important that when you see somebody suffering, you know, or when you see somebody um, faced with an ill fate, like how uh, Na Naman was, so it's, for me, it's just encouraging to know that the girl just stood her ground and said, I'm going to tell um, the wife about um, this prophet, yes. you know, and so that the master may be healed, mm -hmm. you know. Even though Naman, you know, he went and they told him what to do and he was mm. resisting. Why should I, you know, why should I go dip myself, mm. you know. But just from an influential space, the girl was very bold. So in a society where there's so many opinions, it's so important that you be bold yes. about the God you serve. And if it may bring a solution, speak about the God you serve, speak facts of the Bible. It's so important that you be bold about your biblical truths. Um, so that's what I would, I would take um, from the lesson of this young girl, being bold, being courageous, um, even not knowing what might have happened yeah. to her, saying that, you she know, could have died. she could have died, anything. But knowing the good God that she serves, she just had to say yes. it because I want my master to be healed, you know, and God will always position you in places where you could um, show his goodness and show his glory at all times. So yeah. that's also just being, it's so important that you speak of God in every room that you enter. People must see the God in you. So important that people resonate with the God in you. Don't always speak about him, don't always quote him, but your actions are always important. I think the, the wife, received it well because of the servant she was, mm. you, right? Yes. Because of the servant she was. Had she played different roles, being on the fence, being out of character mm. and everything. So, so important at workspaces, at people. She might not have been receptive right? to even listen to the little girl. Absolutely. So the way yeah. you present yourself yeah. in society, people are quick to reject because they're like, but you don't live that lifestyle. Yes, you know, yes. you're telling me about this, but your actions at work, you don't give excellence, you know? So important, I always say that excellence is my signature. So everywhere, everything I do I like needs, needs to be um, excellent. It's so important, so yes. Yes, I mean, okay, what I'm taking away <laughs> from your explanation. Yes. Even listening on its own can be considered an act of service to God, you know, in mm. terms of uh, Naman's wife listening to the girl. Mm. And also, when you're being influenced by God, you know, to serve others mm. and to call others to Him, it doesn't matter who exactly your target audience is. I mean, Naman was a captain. Right. And she was just a servant mm. girl. But she managed to show Naman who exactly Prophet Elisha was, who mm. exactly God is. So yeah, 
Yeah, that mm -hmm. is true. Mm -hmm. um, how have you found it adapting traditional ways of ministry onto social media settings, you know, because you have to sort of reel people in, you have to be aesthetic, appealing, but at the same time still authentic and mm, true to you true. and true to what you want to achieve, mm. you know, in being a child of God. Um, and how, do you, how have you done that without diluting the messages that you want to impart people with? Mm. I believe it's so important you, I think, let me start like this. It's for me, young people need to relate. They need not to feel judged at any time. So my way is just seeing what they're going through and speaking to them at, at most times and really realizing what they are going through so that you can speak into that and use the word to medicate what they are going through. Yeah. Um, so when you use the Bible, don't use it as a weapon. Mm. So important. Use it as something that is healing, something that people need to reach out to because they are faced with circumstances in their lives that they cannot handle. So being on social media, a lot of people are going through a lot of things, you know, depression, anxiety, GBV, yes. you know. Um, so speaking into those current situations, using the word of God to medicate. So that's how you don't dilute the word. Mm -hmm so that people resonate with what you're saying because you are um, speaking into the current situation and it's written also in the word in, in how to instruct them to live their lifestyles and heal and go back to God, accept Jesus Christ as their personal savior. So important, reiterate um, the good, things that God is consistently telling us, be baptized, um, choose Jesus Christ as your personal savior. And in choosing him, it doesn't mean that you have to be this Christian that is <laughs> often perceived, you know how they perceive Christians and so boring. Yes. And you know, they don't want to be that yeah, because- Very strict. Right? Very rigid. So um, it's, it's important to be relevant without diluting the word of God. Very important mm. so I'd say speaking into the situations like I mentioned that possibly would be happening um, so that means the church has to be very vigilant around the topics the news what's going on so we can speak into that so that we are not drawn away and preaching our own things while people are in need of a word in that season speaking into um, that current situation i mean we have young children who died you know at the tavern you know our church needs to speak on that. That is a very important um, thing that we need to speak on. And even in the church, we find young people drinking. So we are not far from that. Yes. So we need to speak on that and just encourage our young kids to um, be principled and getting to the root of their why. Why did you start this? Why, you know? So for me, don't be too rigid about your religion don't be too rigid because that makes people draw away yeah. and not listen so that's how that's the approach that i've used to help the younger generation reach back to god and say i want to pray more i want to yeah. read more i want to fast more like we started the sacred space prayer group uh, where we have international people who share their testimonies um, around what they've been through. So be diverse about spreading your gospel. So important. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it also goes to show that spreading the gospel and being influential, mm. as much as it is spiritual, it can also happen through other spheres. You know, like you said, just talking about social issues, mm. current issues. Um, young people need to be inspired and know that 
if their form of influencing others is through health mm. or you know it's through beauty or whatever mm. it may be that mm. they can go down that route you know so yeah i agree um I just want to share this Bible verse, First Timothy 4, verse 12. Oh. It's, <laughs> it's a charge to young women. Mm. I'll read it. I know I can, I can see the excitement in your eyes. Yes. So that's good. It's a good sign. It says, let no one look down on you because of your youth, but mm. be an example and set a pattern for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in moral purity. Mm. So it's exactly what you've said mm. of the youth not being undermined by what they undermined by what others think that they mm. can do, but instead just tackling the bull the bull heads on. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. So do you think that there's still space with all that being said? Mm -hmm. That that there's still space for young women to influence in other spheres, wellness, human rights, love spirituality, healthy foods, etc. Um, in social media or even physically, do you mm -hmm. think that there's still that space? Um, we are influ walking influences. Let me just <laughs> begin by saying that. Um, people are observant of who you are, your character, how you portray yourself, the principles you live by, everything. So don't think that you need a stage mm. to be an influencer. Don't think you need 60,000 followers to be an influencer, not at all. People are always watching. Yes. And it's important that you show up as who God has called you to be because that speaks life into somebody else. You are influencing that very individual who will also speak about the very same message that you have taught them. Um, so don't think that influencing is a stage or, you know, it's you have tough. to reach a certain accolade to be called an influencer. You are a walking influencer. Everything that you do, every, how you are portraying yourself in society means so much. Hence, it's so important that you, the actions that you take um, are very thought, um, thought about and you just don't do things for the moment because you want to do them. So yes, there is still space, definitely. You need to show up as who God has called you to be in that career that you have taken, who God has called you to be in that business. And I, I believe there is so much room for you to influence a society at large, but it starts at one person at a time. Mm. So important that um, you really realize that you influence the people that you are with at home then at work, then it, then it becomes a whole community, then you can, mm. you know, yeah, mm. venture out, yeah, I guess. Like, I mean, how you've said that your NGO, your NGO has spread internationally mm. and they can even share their testimonies. Mm. It just goes to show that we're all going through the same things and we can all Absolutely. relate in some way. Yeah. So, yeah, I agree. Um, Considering all that we've spoken about, I guess my takeaways are mm -hmm. that we shouldn't be afraid to speak up. Mm -hmm. um, we also shouldn't be afraid to question ourselves on what our reason for living is, you know, what our why is, our purpose mm -hmm. and conviction, and also what exactly our commitments are. Mm -hmm. So, yes. Um, what impact has this journey had on you personally? Sure. It's been a beautiful journey for me. I've seen myself grow spiritually, and I knew that God had to take me through young and spiritually inspired to heal me mm -hmm. and to heal possibly things, the traumas inside that I would have not spoken about. Um, in my podcast, I become very vulnerable about what I've been through 
and just sharing my message and sharing my story and my journey. So God has really brought Young and Spiritually Inspired to heal me. Mm. And I remember at a very dark stage in my life where worship brought me out of, you know, being very depressed and, you know, and I'd worship a lot. Hence, I love worship music. Like, yes. that's the only music I listen to. I really, really love worship music. Uh, yeah, so um, a takeaway is just God brought me out of a very messy um, season and just to heal me, just to say, Bulalwa, you are still valid. You are still worthy. Your story matters. People need to hear your story. And still continuing, knowing that God will fund my ideas, knowing God will put you in spaces that you thought you wouldn't enter, doors and rooms that you thought you wouldn't enter. So it's been beautiful. It's been emotionally uh, draining at times, but I'm thankful to God that he chose me and that I can always speak from a place of um, being relevant, a space of being vulnerable, a space where I can sit with a young person and tell them my journey and they can resonate, you know, and feel that Uubuli is not being judgmental, but she really, really wants the best for me. So it's, it's been a beautiful journey, beautiful, beautiful mess. <laughs> but but beautiful would be the bold word, yes. Mess has to be beautiful <laughs> always. Yes, <laughs> broken pieces, you know, the broken pieces of my life, you know, God being the potter, you know, yes. consistently breaking me down and until he forms that woman that he wants me to be in yes. society, you know, so he doesn't throw away the clay when it's, you know, when he feels it's not fit, he takes it again and molds it and until it becomes that perfect vessel. Mm. So that has been my journey. And I mean, considering inspired talks, mm. when you listen to those podcasts, they are very healing. You know, even the way you speak, um, mm -hmm. I'm sure it came out of a place of you need, you, you felt it in you that you need to heal people or that mm -hmm. you could be, you know, touching more people on that uh, platform mm -hmm. as opposed, you know, to the writings who that may appeal to others mm -hmm. as well. So what, um, how, how were you motivated to even change platforms, think yeah. of different things to do, to stay relevant, relevant as well. Inspired Talks started during the pandemic, 2020, yeah, mm. pandemic era. And that time there was so much anxiety, yeah. you know, you losing people. And I've lost my mentor, Alex Granger, and that for me, was a, a tour um, and I thought to myself, let me speak about the journey that I've been through. And people thinking that Bulalwa has no story because she's just a writer, she's, she's just this put together woman, you know. But sharing my, my journey from, you know, my adoption, being very intricate in detail about how my mom told me and everything, then sharing about waiting, you know, for marriage, then speaking about purpose, you know. So for me, it was just a thing of being vulnerable about who I am and people getting to know Ubulelo. I'm very introverted, very reserved. And it's a beautiful thing for other people to see the other side where they can really listen and say, wow, okay, Ubi has journeyed, you know, yeah. so long. So yeah, I think for me, it was just a healing session. Um, as I always say on the podcast that this is my venting place where I just want to share and just somebody listens and g gains hope and heals. 
And because, you know, once you're vulnerable, you inspire others to be vulnerable as well, mm -hmm. to let go of the hard shell yes. and to be real. Mm. So, yes. Yeah. So in closing, given all that we've spoken about, yes. uh, about being courageous, mm -hmm. um, about influencing, not only being um, accessible to people with social media, mm. about being vulnerable with each other and knowing our reason why, mm -hmm. what would you like other young people, other young women to experience? Um, in life and also what other last words may you have, you know, to viewers? All right. I would really love young women to be women after God's heart, to be women who chase after righteousness in a world, in a society where things are material, you know, they're chasing after material, stuff more than they chase after the word. I would love young women to be bold about who they are in society, women to speak up, women to share their stories, women who face certain circumstances in their lives to be vulnerable about them, to shy away from thinking that they are not enough. I'd love young women to um, excel you know, in all they do, excel, um, put your best foot forward because that's how you represent God in society. You know, when people look at you, may they see the God in you. When people look at you, may they want, may they be intrigued about how, how is she doing this? You know, um, may we be a forgiving, you know, society, women who are very forgiving, women who know how to take up space, you know, yes. women who know how to um, continuously uh, go after their goals, you know, and knowing that seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto us, Matthew 6 verse 33. And Seeking God says, I am positioned in stillness. I am positioned in a place where God is moving on my behalf. I am positioned in a place where I'm not um, sacrificing my principles and who God is to me to gain an accolade or to open doors. God will open those doors for me. So in a nutshell, I want women to be prayerful, to be bold, to be courageous, to be influential, women who are called for a higher standard of living. Wow. Yes. <laughs> no, you've said enough. Yes. You've said a mouthful. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, I would just like to thank you for your time mm -hmm. and coming through to the program and mm -hmm. enriching us and enlightening us, mm -hmm. you know, on how we as young people have so much, you know, mm. to still accomplish and how we shouldn't undermine ourselves and mm -hmm. undermine our purpose. Mm -hmm. So I would like for you just to close for us in prayer. Mm -hmm. All right, let's pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this wonderful day that you have given me. Thank you, Father, for the breath of life. God, we come into your presence asking for the Holy Spirit. God, we thank you for the opportunity that we can speak boldly about you with no shame. God, I pray that, Lord, you forgive us of our sins. Father God, we know that you have so much in store for us. I pray for each and every individual who will be watching this, God. I pray that you heal them. I pray that they may take a stand, Father God, to do the right. I pray that, Father God, that they may be influential in society and that they may choose to be a principled woman. I pray that God, you be with us as we navigate through life. We pray that we may be positioned in prayer. We may be positioned in the word. God, we pray that Heavenly Father, every weight that so easily entangles us, Father God, that you be with us and that we let it go. We pray that Father God, that you make us anew, create in us clean and purified hearts. 
God, we know that you are doing a new thing. We know that, Father God, that you will make a way where there seems to be no way. Father God, in our careers, sustain us. Father God, in our homes, be with mm -hmm. us. We pray for marriages. We pray for young women who look for marriages, Father God, that mm -hmm. they may seek you first, Father God. We pray, Father God, that you be with us, Father God, that we may move the way you want us to move. Praying that, Father God, that you always bless us, that you always correct us, and that, Father God, you may lead us all to righteousness. This I pray in your wonderful name, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you, Bulela. It's a pleasure. Thank you for being with us. Mm -hmm. And to the viewers, thank you for also joining us. Until next time, God bless. Thank you.